Hello everybody, in this video we are going to review roots, also known as radicals. You may be familiar with the square root, but we're going to talk about other types of roots as well. Now one thing that you have to know in terms of order of operations um, is that a radical or a root is the same thing as an exponent. They can be interchanged. So if I have something written as a radical, I can rewrite it as an exponent, and here's how. So first off, let's start with square roots. Uh, we know the definition of a square root is if a is the square root of b, then a squared equals b. But here is what it is in exponential form. So a square root is exactly the same as raising something to the one-half power. If you don't believe me, go grab a calculator, go on Wolfram Alpha, and take a number like 144 and raise it to the one-half power, and you'll see it's the exact same thing as a square root of 144. Now the cube root has a very similar definition of a square root, but instead of a squared, it's a cubed. So if a is the cube root of b, then a cubed equals b. And the cube root, we have to make sure we are very careful when we write cube roots. You have to put the 3 inside the check really kind of tiny, like a little exponent, because really that's what it is. And if I want to rewrite a cube root in exponential form, then I just have to put the number inside parentheses and raise it to the surprise, surprise, one-third power. Now let's talk about the nth root. Now you can take a, whatever root you want. If you want to find the pth root of something, you can. I mean, it's not pretty, but you totally can. Um, and so we have the notation for the nth root. Notice the n is written inside the little check, like a tiny little exponent, because once again, that's what it is. And it says if a is the nth root of b, then a to the nth power equals b. And if I want to write that in exponential form, parentheses again, and I put it to the 1 over n power. So any radical, if I want to write it as an exponent, it's basically a fractional exponent. So we call that n the index of the radical, right? Now, a little note, numbers that have been rooted with an even index, they have two roots. A principal one, which is the positive root, like the square root of 36 is 6, and a negative one, like negative square root of 36, which is negative 6. And notice how I wrote the negative root. The negative sign is outside of the radical. You don't stick it inside the radical. That's an entirely different thing. And if you have an odd index, that means you have exactly one root. So there's only one cube root of 64, and that is 4. Now this is important. This, this thing right here, even odd indices, and plural of index is indices. This is important for solving equations. Now we're going to get to this equation solving a little bit later, but let me give you a little preview. So if I have some equation that says x squared equals 4, the fact that that is a squared tells me that there are two numbers that are going to work here, positive 2 and negative 2. But if I have some other equation that tells me x cubed equals 8, well, it's an odd index, which tells me I only have one solution. So the cube root of 8 is what x is. In this case, it's 2, because 2 cubed is 8. And it's not going to be negative 2, because if I took negative 2 and cubed it, I'd get negative 8, right? So odd indices, one root, even indices, two roots. And it's not so important with simplification, but it is crucial when we solve later on in algebra. Now we're not to solving yet, we're still at the point where we just want you to be able to simplify and understand the notation. So when you are simplifying, you follow the notation as it's written. Don't add pluses or minuses, don't make a positive and negative or anything like that when you simplify. Simplify just means to simplify, and so you have to follow what is written. So if I see this, square root of 25, my answer is not plus or minus 5, it's just 5 because this notation tells me I want the principal or positive root. Whereas this one here with the negative on the outside tells me I don't want plus or minus 11, I only want negative 11 because the notation is asking for the negative root. Now one thing we noticed last year that kids were having trouble with is when they saw something written like this. So what does this mean? The 3 on the outside is not an index for the radical. If it were, I would have written it really tiny above the check. This means something else. And what this means is 3 times the square root of 36. Okay. Now in this case, we have to follow the, and in all cases, we have to follow the order of operations. So this is a multiplication, and this is a radical. And remember I said in the very beginning 
that radicals were the same thing as exponents. So you have to simplify the exponent first, and then you get 3 times 6, which is 18. And so this next one, I see a negative 4, the little 3 above the check mark, and an 8. Well, that little 3 tells me that that is the index of the radical. So I have negative 4, and it's just outside. And whenever you don't see an operation outside of something like that, it means multiplication the cube root of 8. So once again, follow the order of operation, take care of exponents first. Cube root of 8 is 2, so it's negative 4 times 2, which is negative 8. All right. So what about this last one? 12 minus 5 root 9. Remember that in between the 5 and the radical is a multiplication. This is really 12 minus 5 times the square root of 9. And then, following the order of operations, exponents comes first, so I have to deal with the square root of 9. So I get 12 minus 5 times 3. And then I do multiplication first, and so I get 12 minus 15. And then, finally, I get negative 3. One last thing is perfect squares. You're going to be dealing with perfect squares all throughout the year, and it is good to know a lot of them. If you can, Make sure you know at least the first 12. If you know the first 25, that would be spectacular. And a perfect square is basically a number that has integer square roots. So for example, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Basically any number of the form n squared where n is an integer. Now we're going to deal with these when we factor, when we simplify radicals later on. And you need to know them now for approximations. So if I want to approximate the square root of 8, and I don't have a calculator I can just type this stuff into, then I can use these perfect squares. The square root of 4, we know, is 2. And the square root of 9, we know, is 3. In between the square root of 4 and square root of 9 are the square roots of 5, square root of 6, square root of 7, and the square root of 8. And if I want a decimal approximation, not the exact value, okay, the exact value of the square root of 5 is this symbol here. That's how we write the exact value of the square root of 5. This symbol is how we write the exact value of the square root of 6. This is how we write the exact value of the square root of 7. And this is how we write the exact value of the square root of 8. These are exact values of the number. These symbols represent the exact value. They cannot be simplified like the square root of 4 can become 2 and the square root of 9 can become 3. These have decimal approximations which go on forever and ever and ever and never repeat. And remember, these numbers are called irrational. So we're going to look at these in terms of a number line. This is the square root of 4, 2. This is the square root of 9 or 3. This is going to be the square root of 5. This is going to be the square root of 6. This is going to be the square root of 7. This is going to be the square root of 8. They're not actually equally spaced out but they're kind of close to those locations. If I want to find a decimal approximation of the square root of 5, I can do this. Now, this is not a perfect approximation. This is not the actual decimal value. This is just one decimal place approximation. So I have to count how many spaces I go from 2 to, to, th to 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So in about five spaces. So what I know is that the square root of 5 is approximately 2.2. The square root of 6 is approximately 2.4. The square root of 7 is approximately 2.6. And this is going to be approximately 2.8. Now these decimals, remember these numbers are irrational, so their decimal approximations go on forever and don't repeat. And these are not equally spaced, but they're about 2.2, about 2.4, about 2.6, and about 2.8. If you don't believe me, go on Wolfram Alpha, check one decimal place, they'll round to 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, and 2.8. And so if I wanted to find an approximation between, let's say, of the number, the square root of 23, I would do the same thing, but then I would take the square root of 16 and the square root of 25 and then break that interval up into however many pieces I need and then use that to get me a decimal approximation of the square root of 23.